Vincent is never late, Mr. Baggins. Nor is he early. He arrives precisely when he means to. dragon fireworks that Pippin and Mary set off that shoot up above the tree, fly over the lake and then continue to chase the guests. So when they were actually filming the scene, the extras were just being chased by a giant light. So not as exciting as a dragon. So the dragon was digitally enhanced by Winter Studios down in Wellington. Now Bilbo's cake was made of polystyrene and of course had 111 candles on it. Now this caused the cake to ignite when Bilbo was saying his birthday slash farewell speech. But Peter Jackson thought Bilbo was doing such a great job with the speech he decided to keep the cameras rolling. So next time you watch the film have a look to the bottom left hand side of your screen you'll see a little bit of smoke rising. So welcome to the Dell. Now the Dell is a small community of seven hobbit holes. It has its own water supply, wood supply and very own veggie garden. So it's pretty self-sufficient. Most of the fruit trees around the Dell are apple and pear trees. But in the book it talks about a young hobbit girl sitting under plum trees. Now in New Zealand the plum trees weren't the right size and scale for what Peter Jackson wanted for the film. So he just planted these apple and pear trees instead and when it came close to filming plucked off all those fruit and leaves and rewired on artificial plum fruit and leaves. Now that is a lot and a lot of effort just for this one area which was only in a few seconds of the film and a couple paragraphs of the book. It is what Peter Jackson is known for, his attention to detail and it just shows in the film. Peter Jackson also hired one person two weeks prior to filming every day to walk up to the clotheslines, pick up the clothes and each night bring them down. That was literally their entire job. Now this had one reason and one reason only, to create natural paths in the grass and to make it look like Cobbington had been lived in for hundreds and hundreds of years. But when it came to film the Lord of the Rings trilogy he came up with a much better option. He, uh, he got a special machine to do that job for him. Now later on you might be able to hear in the pond uh, in front of you uh, 30 odd frogs. Uh, no, <laughs> we can sometimes hear them from Bang Ed. So you could just imagine how loud they would have been during filming and they actually interrupted the filming. So what the film company had to do was catch them, move them to the back of the farm, take them away on a little vacation and bring them back here after filming. So they are still very happy living here and we can tell this because one, we can usually hear them and two, because our frogs are very sensitive to their environment, but the gardeners do a great job at looking after them because they are still very happy living here. So guys, that was a lot of talking. Whew, sorry about that. <laughs> so guys, we're going to make our way down the path and around the pond. We'll regroup later on at the wood chopping area where this group is. Very shortly, you will be able to go inside a real hobbit hole. Yay! <laughs> but unfortunately it is just a retaining wall behind the door. Don't be expecting a fully furnished home like you see in Bag End, a huge mansion behind the door. It is just a retaining wall as I said before. Uh, all interior filming was done in a studio in Wellington. Uh, so as, as soon as you see Bilbo, Frodo or Gandalf step inside Bag End, they're transported down to Wellington in a few short seconds. Now the reason why they did all inside filming in a studio was that so that they could control sound and light and weren't too heavily impacted by the weird weather of New Zealand. So guys what we're going to do now, we're going to make our way up the hill here. You'll see five new Hobbit holes that weren't there for the filming of The Lord of the Rings but were added when it came to film the Hobbit trilogy. Alright, alright guys come on up! Ja, das 
Moi je les ai sans personne.